Hey, so I wanted to make a really short video about what Buddha nature is and why it's important. And yeah, I spent some time thinking about what's the most kind of comprehensive and yet succinct and grounded version of Buddha nature that I can describe. So just to give a bit of context as well of how I'm relating to this. So on in my framework and model, I've created a map which has different layers of experience and those layers are defined by the rainbow colours and each of those layers has a version that is the kind of like fully awakened version of that layer. So once you're really, uh, yeah, you've really awakened that aspect of, of yourself, uh, the world will appear and be experienced in a certain way. And Often what happens when people talk about Buddha nature is they pick one of those layers and they essentially, um, yeah, equate Buddha nature with the fully awakened version of just that layer. So an example of this is um, interdependence. So everything is interdependent in the universe. If you pick one thing up, you're picking everything else up. Uh, there's no way to really kind of separate that. And that in this model is the fully awakened version of the yellow layer. Another part of the model, another layer in the model is the green layer and the fully awakened version of that is that everything is love. So um, yeah, this kind of like underlying fundamental goodness that exists in us, a sort of benign, equanimous, um, yeah, a sense of like cause and effect that is in the, where everything's a relationship and everything's in the process of being given and received and it has this sort of yeah, like, economist loving quality underneath it. Um, that is often also equated with, with Buddha nature. And then just to give one more example, it's like all, percep all perceptions are empty. So in this model, that's the indigo layer, the mind, and, um, yeah, the sense of, like, oh, everything having that sort of empty, um, changeable quality to it is another thing that is often equated to, ah, this is Buddha nature. And to me, it's almost like all of these aspects are really important facets, um, but they're all kind of like one bit. It's almost like the metaphor is if you refract the light, so you've got the white light and you kind of refract it out, you get these different parts of experience of Buddha nature. Um, but yeah, they're not they're not the whole thing, they're just, they're facets of it. Yeah, then we come to what Buddha nature is and I almost wanted to draw attention to that there's almost two different ways to relating to Buddha nature. So one is very much a kind of looking higher, looking up, looking out, looking higher. Um, and that has a very it, it, it tends to come through with messages like everything is already perfect and um, that's lovely and can be really nice and also uh, it's quite hard to pass and tends to not, um, it, it kind of, it doesn't make that much sense to people or really land in their experience and this comes on to why this topic is important to me, it's because when we have an embodied felt sense of Buddha nature in our own personal experience, it's like the level of resource and capacity that we have available to us is so much greater. So one, that helps us feel better in ourselves, just moving through our days, the sense of like fundamental goodness, being in the right place at the right time, things, um, yeah, the interdependent nature, the, the emptiness, like all of these aspects are really good at helping us be resourced. Um, but also that allows us to show up more for experience, really be present, really be real and honest about what is happening in our experience. And so this is a little bit about where that higher version, connecting to it as a kind of like higher power almost of everything is already perfect, is I think a little bit misleading because actually what you can do is gaslight out the difficult parts of your experience.
and really uh, what we're trying to do is resource to feel the truth uh, to love yourself as you are and not having that sort of like critical view of yourself um, so that sort of opens the door into this other way of relating to Buddha nature and this is a much more kind of soulful Jungian uh, really turning inwards sort of Buddha nature and it comes from really going into the depths of your being and feeling what is present there and essentially yeah loving it being honest about it noticing it and trusting that it's there it's good it has a purpose it's meaningful and then if we keep journeying in and keep yeah going deeper and deeper it's almost like we come out into this sense of the collective and the collective conscious and in that a sort of collective intelligence can start to emerge so things like synchronicity and there's a way in which yeah the buddha nature has this very ineffable quality it's very hard to define but that sense of being really deeply in touch with your experience and trusting that your place in this moment is meaningful the things that you're feeling the things that you're thinking just kind of like allowing all of that to come out and emerge and flower and be a part of the full expression then that is that is buddha nature <laughs>